Good morning, everyone. My assigned topic are the organizational design and change management. So let's discuss the organizational design. What is organizational design? It is the process of aligning the structure of an organization with its, with its objectives with the ultimate aim of improving the efficiency and effectiveness. So the organizational design is the process of creating the hierarchy within a company. Organizational, des organizational design also refers to the way a business organization achieves the right combination for integration and differentiation of the operations in response to the uncertainties it faces in its external surroundings. It must be aligned with the business strategy and the market environment in which the business operates. So it is also important to give emphasis to the key elements of the organizational design to gain the upper hand in the industry. So these are the elements of the organizational design, the work specialization, the departmentalization, the chain of command, the span of control, the centralization and decentralization and the formalization. So let's discuss first the work. It answers the question, what are you good at? So for example, uh, if an accountant is good at accounting, an engineer is good in engineering. So it is also possible that one person is actually go good at both. So the business leaders must consider the job tasks and the specific duties associated with the given positions, dividing the work tasks among the different jobs and assigning them into different levels. So that is the role of the work specialization elements. The second key element is the departmentalization, which answers the question, who do you work with? So departments are often a group of workers with the same overall functions. So they are often broken down by the broad categories such as the functional, the product, geographical, process, and customer. So the common departments are or includes the accounting, the manufacturing, the customer service, and sales. So the company generally organizes their employees based on their function, which would be accountants working with accountants or engineers working with engineers or by division. We have also the chain of command. So it answers the question, who do you report to? So the chain of command of a company describes the hierarchy and can affect the workplace culture and the efficiency of the work production. So for example, with a strict chain of command, each employee has a direct supervisor with an exception for the chief executive officer. In a more flexible chain of command, the owner may be, may be the highest position of contact then a manager or two in the middle with the rest of the employees ranking under the managers. We have the span of control, which answers the question, how many people do you manage? So the span of control is an element of the organizational design that accounts uh, for the number of people a leader supervises and the tasks they handle. We have also the centralization and decentralization. It answers the question, who decides? So centralization and decentralization refer to the senior levels of employees who can influence the company decisions. So each company rest somewhere on the scale of centralization. We have also the last one, the formalization, which answers the question, how many rules do you have? So formalization uh, specifies the relationships and roles within a company. 
The formalization of elements also can clarify the workplace rules. We have the importance of organizational design. Good organizational design helps improve the communication. It increases the productivity and inspires innovation. It creates an environment where people can work effectively. It determines how effectively an organization responds to various factors in its environment and obtains and makes use of the scarce resources they have. Also, the organizational design becomes more important in a global context because to become a global competitor, a company often create a new structure. Let's now proceed for the change management. So what is change management? It is the systematic approach which deals with the transition or transformation of different organizational objectives, the processes, the core values, or the technologies. So the change management involves defining and adopting strategies, the structures, procedures, and technologies to handle changes in external conditions and the business environment. It's like changing a tire while driving. The organization can't stop doing what it's supposed to do to accommodate the change. So it needs to keep, to keep going even uh, while it's changing. So the primary goal of the change management is to successfully implement new processes, new products, and business strategies while minimizing negative outcomes. So there are types of organizational change. The first one is the organization-wide change. So it is a type of change that affects every team member of the company regardless of the role or department. Example, uh, the division of your company or a whole organization merged with another or the entire company is switching to a new office technology provider. The second one is the personal change. So example of this is a member of the team has been fired or misconduct. So personal change happen when employees join or leave an organization. We have also the unplanned change. It is a change that you did not fully consider or strategize for in your business plan. So example is the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, your, there are changes where and how your team work together. Also, we have remedial change. So it is a change made in response to a performance or, or culture problem in the organization. Also, the transformational change. It is intended to transform the way a company operates or serves its customers. So for example, a company decides to partner with an external organization to expand its offerings in a new market. So why is change management important in human resources? First is it redefines the employee roles and responsibilities. So change management comes into play when those employee definitions need to be redefined. So this can occur due to many situations inclu including economic instability, the need to downsize, new technology or procedures or the trends in consumer purchasing behavior. The next is reducing or eliminating resistance to change. So change in an organization can cause stress and fear among the staff members. So the best way for the human resource to manage change and alleviate stress is through communication. So it helps alleviate the stress and anxiety about the change. So it is important for the HR personnel to describe how the changes will ultimately impact or benefit the staff members as well as the company overall. Also, we have the implementing changes in distinct phases. Another reason that managing the change is important for HR professionals is because it is typically the responsibility to implement the change. So it is best to implement the change slowly over time. 
there, there are phases for implementing change. This includes the preparation for the change by outlining the key roles, communicate key dates for change implementation, monitor change results and listen to feedback, and alter plans and communications as necessary. And the last one is providing support systems and training programs for change. So they may also need various forms of training that could involve the on the job training sessions, the mandatory seminars, continuing education courses. We have uh, recognizing resistance to change. Active uh, resistance. So from the word itself, no active. So it is clear. It is when you know how exactly what your employees are doing, how they react, how they resist about that coming change in the management. Now, in this case, we have constructive and destructive active resistance. The constructive active resistance, it is when your employees within the organization are discussing, debating, and negotiating the change. Although they may not like the change, they are against it, but at least they are in the room discussing it and trying to find solution. On the other hand, the destructive active resistance, this is when your employees are ridiculing yung andaming ugly criticism and the worst, they recruit, meaning they're going around and looking for other employees to bring into their camp to create a massive number of employees na mag ng change. So, passive resistance. This is really the worst because unlike the active resistance, this is done under the table. It is when employees agree verbally that the change is necessary, but they do not follow through. No? They procrastinate uh, getting around what they agreed to do, but later, they may feign uh, ignorance. They might say, na, oh, I did not know I was supposed to do that. Where in fact, alam na manila. Ayo lang nila mag cooperate sa change na gusto ng management. The role of managers in change management. So first, preparing for change. Evaluate the changes underway that impact you and your team as well as your personal level of buy-in. So you can pinpoint where you are struggling with a change and develop action plans for addressing your own resistance. Also, a manager can be supportive of the change, no? You must first embrace a change that is affecting you and your employees before you can effectively lead your employees through the change. So this is known as the manager's dilemma. So it is important crossroad in the manager's change journey. Also, leading employees through change. So they can introduce change to their employees by building awareness by reinforcing the business reasons for the change and how the change will impact your employees as individuals. You can also manage each employee through the transition. So you can recall the key activities for the manager's outline, embrace those as your role in times of change, be a communicator, an advocate, a coach, or the resistance manager and liaison to your employees. And last, ensure the implemented changes are reinforced and celebrated. It is important no, to not only recognize and acknowledge employees who are thriving during the change, but also ensure that the time and energy they committed to a project has not been wasted. We have importance of change management. Managing a successful organizational change can increase morale among workers and drive positive teamwork and job enrichment. Effective organizational change management allows the company to maintain a constant state of evolution 
and facilitate periods of general business change, allowing workers to remain motivated and productive during the introduction of new technologies or procedures. So that's the end of my report. My partner will continue for the organizational uh, development. Thank you.